Let's take this circuit. We have a simple circuit which has a resistor and an inductor, and that's it, with a voltage source. And instead of using a DC value we did last semester, let's use some voltage source, some V maximum, some number in the front with cosine WT. That could be like 5 cosine 200T. Now, the way we dealt with circuit like this when a DC source last semester wasn't really that bad. We created a first order differential equation. I gave you a handout. If there's the equation, there's the answer. Here, a little bit more challenging. If I do KVL here, Kershaw voltage loss, the sum of the voltage in a closed loop is zero. So negative Vm cosine Wt plus, this is I here, The voltage here will be R times I. The voltage here will be what? L di dt is equal to zero. Which means if I rewrite that L di dt plus R sub I equals Vm, some number in the front, cosine Wt. So that should, uh, notice there's only one unknown, which is I, and that should allow me to solve for I. Um, is Wt a variable? Well, T is time, W is a constant. When you plug in, for example, in this outlet, if I plug in a hair dryer or a toaster, W for us in the US, well, what's the frequency in the US? How many hertz? 60 hertz. In Europe, it's 50 hertz. W is actually 2 pi F. So if you multiply it, so it's a constant, 2 pi times 60, which is 120 pi which is usually 377. So a lot of the problems in our book, when you look at them, W will have a value of 377. So it'll be cosine 377T. The reason? Because we use a frequency of 60 hertz. If you are in Europe, the frequency is 50. This becomes 2 pi times 50, which is 100 pi, and that's 314T. This explains why it took forever for everything I had to charge. Because I was over in Italy, and well, different frequency, and they also use different amplitude. Mm -hmm. Here, like our outlet with 120 volts, in Europe they use 210, 220, you know. Now, in the lab, when you go to the lab, we can make W any number you want to because we got these signal generators. We can make the frequency any number I want it to be. I can make the frequency 10 hertz. I can make it 1,000 hertz. I can make it 500 hertz. So that W can change in the lab. We can use any number, you know. And now the question, how do you solve this differential equation? Well, if your actually voltage is cosine, your current is also going to be a cosine. But what's going to happen, instead of just cosine WT, it might have a phase shift in it. So let's assume we know it's going to be that the current, and we'll see what that number is, going to have some number in the front, we'll call it some constant, I have no idea what that number is, some value, cosine Wt plus some number sine Wt. Now you say, where did this come from? Well, we found out that when you apply a cosine function, the voltage, the current will have a cosine function, but will have a phase shift. So your, for example, I'll show you where this came from, your current, I, I'm going to show you where this equation came from, might have some value like this, some constant in the front, will be the same W. The W doesn't change, but it's going to have a phase shift to it. It's not going to be in sync. The only time will be in phase if you have purely resistive circuit. This is not a purely resistive. There's an inductor there. 
So it's going to have a phase shift to it. So that angle is going to be shifted by some degree, let's call it beta, for example. I erase my trig identity, cosine alpha plus beta. Anyone remember, anyone remember cosine alpha plus beta with that identity for it? It's cosine, cos, I think it's cosine, cosine <coughs> minus sine, sine. I'll find it. It's cosine alpha, cosine beta. minus sine alpha sine beta. So if you plug in these here into this equation, this is alpha and this is beta, then your answer is going to be, there's k in the front, is going to be k times cosine wt times cosine, whatever that phase shift, that's some number, minus sine wt sine beta. Remember, this is cosine beta as a constant. When you multiply it by k, you have another constant. So you have some k1 cosine wt sine beta is a constant. When you multiply it by k and by minus 1 is also another constant, could be a negative number. So that's why we said the current is going to be something like this. k1, i1, whatever you want to call it, some constant, cosine wt, plus another constant, sine wt. And now the question, what is l1 and l2? Or, yeah, I mean, uh, what is i? I need to solve for I1, I2. I can't tell you what the current, I know what these values are. So how would I find the answer to them? Well, there is my equation right here. We know this is the answer. So take the current here and plug it right there. You should be able to solve now for I sub 1, I sub 2. So L times, what's the derivative of this current? Let's go through the math. Remember your calculus. What's the derivative? I1, I1 is a constant, cosine wt. Derivative cosine is negative sine, right? That's negative. I1 w sine wt. Plus, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. I2, W, cosine WT. Plus, R times I. R is this one, times I, which is what? I1, cosine WT, plus I2, sine WT. All of that should equal Vm cosine Wt. Now I can break it down to two parts. I'll take one part with the cosine of Wt. And in it, I should be able to put this piece, L times I2W. plus r times i sub 1. I'm collecting like terms. Can you see it? This times that, plus this times this. That's the cosine. Let's look at the sine. The sine, what do we have? r times i sub 2 minus this one, L times I sub 1 W. All of that equals Vm cosine Wt.
for this side to equal that side. The coefficient of the cosine on this side must equal the coefficient of cosine on that side. And the coefficient of the sine on this side must equal the coefficient of the sine on that side. So the cosine on this side is what? L I 2 W plus R I sub 1 is equal to Vm. And the coefficient of the sine on this side, R I sub 2 minus L I 1 W has to equal the coefficient of the sine on that side, which is a zero. There is no sine there. We have two equations by two unknowns. We can solve for I1 and I2. Now you can use substitution if you want to. This equation says R times I sub 2 equals L W times I sub 1 divide by R I sub 2 equals what? L W over R times I sub 1. Bring that equation down. L W times I sub 2. Instead of I sub 2, let me put what? L W over R I sub 1 plus R times I sub 1 equals Vm. Multiply everything by R to clean it. Lw squared I sub 1 plus R squared I sub 1 equals Vm. We can factor I squared. I mean I1, not I squared. Uh, L W or L squared W squared plus what R squared? What's I sub one? It's V M over L squared W squared plus R squared. Now we know what I sub one is. If I know what I sub one, can I find I sub two? <coughs> Absolutely. What is I sub two? L W over R times I sub 1, which is V M over L squared W squared plus R squared. So we managed to solve for I1, I2. That means we know what the current is. Now, if we have numbers for these, if that was an example with numbers in it, I'm done. Well, this is solving it in time domain. Yes, the, the question by Dave here, you know, this is a lot of work for a simple problem. It is. Imagine if you have a couple of loops and all that. It's going to be a nightmare. So is there a shortcut to solve these problems? And the answer is yes. When your source is a sine or a cosine, we're going to use a method called phaser which is complex numbers. That's what we discuss, complex numbers. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take a problem that's in time domain. That's this problem. Convert that to phaser, which is complex. Then solve it in phaser. Then convert it back to time domain. Is there any reason why you would want to do a problem just in time domain? Right back. Well, if the math is not that bad, you know, like this wasn't really a bad math. If you know the answer is going to be like this. If we had numbers for this, this is actually a quick problem to solve in time domain if you plug in real numbers. You know, it won't be that bad. But with L's and all this, it makes it a little bit ugly. So. You can do it. Sometimes we use the different, actually, later in the course, I want to discuss now, we use Laplace, which is a nicer way. Now, this method, phaser, only works when your, so, when your source is sine or cosine. It does not work if your source is 
we did last semester, like a DC value, unit step function, a ramp function, something else, it doesn't work. So this method we're going to be looking at is the quickest way to solve a problem when your source is either a sine or a cosine. So that like works on method, it works for all of them? The Laplace? Yeah, yeah well actually, but it's not quicker, it's not quicker than this. With sine, cosine, this is the quickest way. Oh. Yep. You'll see that when we get to it. You know, like solving a quad quadratic equation, there's multiple ways. You can solve using the quadratic formula. You know that method works regardless what kind of a problem you have. Is it really the quickest way? No, because if you have x squared minus 4 equals to 0, you got to be silly to go use a quadratic formula. There's a couple other techniques quicker than that. The same thing right here. Laplace down the road will solve almost any problem. Is it the best way? If you have a sine cosine, this will be the quickest way. You know? So why would I go in that direction? So I'll try to use this method if my source is sine cosine. In real life, most of the problems, we have sine cosine. So phasor is very popular for us.